officially into September and it's crazy because this year now things are really off and popping as far as um, produce. The tomatoes are ripening really nicely. I have some Armenian cucumbers coming through. I've had lots and lots of lemon cucumbers. Here's the big one. The peppers, we have been stressing out like crazy, so they are finally ripening. But some of these plants are just absolutely loaded. These are the red naga brains. I have lots of sugar rush peach peppers. We pulled our first melon yesterday. Very, very proud of how things turned out this year. It was a little bit slower, but... Oh my gosh. <laughs> I thought Kira was a mountain lion or a deer. <laughs> uh... Kira. I've pulled one Kahari melon, kind of waiting for the other ones to ripen, but there are about 10 from these few plants. Ooh, there's a good one there. I have some Crimson Sweets and Benny Kadimas. The cucamelons I have tried to grow three years now, and I have finally successfully grown them. They are so adorable, and they taste like a cucumber to me. Some people have said that they taste like a melon. These three eggplants have produced quite a bit. I had these apocalypse scorpion plants and they were looking awful. And I just thought, what the heck, I would throw them in the ground in here way late in the season. And you would not believe that there's some peppers on there. Look at those. Ooh. The poblanos. Renzas. Still haven't turned red, but the skin is so fun. And the market season, the farmer's market here is pretty much done. There is one more market, but my son has started school, so I don't know if I'll make that one. So now it's kind of nice to just be like, okay, it's time to start preserving this. <laughs> preserve, preserve. Um, I may have a couple pop-up sales because, like I said, the produce is kind of just now popping off. Um, but very, very proud of this year's garden season and the successes in there. As always, lots of lessons and failures, but um, my ghost peppers, for instance, last year were completely loaded. And this year they have been the last to produce. So I think that's interesting because this would be one of the more mild peppers on the super hot spectrum. Um, this is definitely the most mild 
hot pepper I grew these black princes and they are absolutely loaded very ornamental um but hot oh my gosh I would say not as hot as a habanero but definitely hotter than a jalapeno but just loaded I've picked tons of these already we're planning on doing a hot pepper sauce with just these These are some yellow seven pot bubble gum. Nope, yellow seven pot. Just kidding. And then I have some seven pot bubble gum as well. So I just threw the names together, but basically we're talking hot, hot, hot people. Out of all of the varieties we've grown, these Dr. Weichies take the cake for me. They are absolutely delicious. And if I were to pick a second, I would say these Arkansas Travelers are also delicious. But I think these Jersey Devils are going to be good for things like salsa. There's not a ton of juice to them. And I think I'm going to use them all for my salsas. This one completely fell on the ground, but <laughs> oh, they're fun. They've got a lot of character to them. And they are a 90-day tomato. So the garden's still going, and it does feel like there's still lots to do. But we do have that first frost hanging over us. So you just never know. Um, hopefully... The weather will be good to us for a little while longer so things can ripen. We still have the meat birds to process. Half of them we've gotten half done, but the yellow jackets have just been so atrocious. But I have to say, I have not been leaving feed out for them and they seem pretty healthy. None of them have really croaked yet. Um, they are over 12 weeks, so hopefully we could do that here this week. The back garden is still one of my favorites. I have to show you, oh my gosh, some of the sunflowers have died, but um, the last video I pulled one of the pumpkins, which was just under 50 pounds. Uh, the other competitors were right around there as well. However, the first place pumpkin, my girl Kelsey, 100 pounds, over 100 pounds. So, oh, I'm coming in. I'm ready for next year. I'm coming swinging, but let me show you the back garden. The blue ones are the Madonna Lace. I had, of course, zinnias, sunflowers. These comb flowers down here are so gorgeous. They do not, or these ones did not grow very tall anyways. From here out, I will only be growing the California Giant zinnias. Volunteer Amaranth from last year, which are the Dreadlock variety, and then the new variety I grew back here. Out of about eight zucchini plants, I really am not getting a whole lot of zucchini, so I'm surprised with that. But these pumpkin trellises or like just growing pumpkins on a trellis is definitely the way to go.
And I will not be doing pumpkins here. Um, I'm not sure what, but I have grown pumpkins here in the last two years. And that could potentially be why my pumpkin wasn't as big as I had anticipated. So this will all be different next year. My plan is to put a whole bunch of compost down here where we've grown the garlic and put one pumpkin plant right here and one pumpkin plant right here so that I can control it better and prune it back and just really pay attention to my one giant pumpkin. I may even till this area here. It was it's mostly um hollyhocks and put a pumpkin there. We'll see. Yes.